Hello, my name is Jeff Evers. I'm the CEO of ICB. I want to welcome everyone to our Kickstart to 100K training presentation. This presentation is not to be viewed by a prospect. It is intended for IBOs only. In fact, this presentation is only intended for the IBO who is serious about making some major financial changes in their life. What I'm going to lay out for you is not a guarantee of income. It's merely an illustration based on past performances by six and seven figure income earners. Your success will be determined by what you do. Now it's been my experience that most people are not afraid and in fact, they're willing to take the massive action. They just want to have some degree of certainty that their efforts will produce the desired results. And that's the best place to start. What's your desired result? Why are you involved in the home-based business industry to start with? Why did you join ICB? Now, if you joined ICB because you like our products, I don't know how to say it any other way. You'll have a hard time building a huge business because you think the products are the key to success. Even though you need great products to have a successful business, the key to success is in the people, not the products. You see, people move products. Products don't move people. If you're interested in creating a major financial change in your life, you'll need to identify a dream that is beyond your ability to achieve doing what you're doing and then you'll need to turn that dream into a burning desire. It's only after you have that burning desire that you'll have the energy and the passion required to build an income that will change your life. Most people jump right into the activity steps of contacting and inviting when they join ICB and then they can't figure out how come their business doesn't grow. Here's one of those truisms. You'll always act in a manner that is consistent with how you see yourself conceptually. After I read a lot of books and went to a lot of seminars and listened to a lot of audios and watched a lot of videos, here's what I finally figured out. The reason I was having a problem keeping the month and money together was a self-concept problem. Without me even knowing it, my self-concept was of a guy who struggled to get ahead financially. Once I accepted that was the problem, then all I had to do was change my self-concept from a guy who struggled financially to a guy who drives nice cars, lives in a nice home, takes nice vacations, spends a lot of quality time with his friends and family, donates a lot of time and money to charities, and a guy who always has a lot of extra cash left over every month. Now it's not quite as easy as it sounds to change your self-concept, but everyone can do it. Because all you have to do is take the time to write down your dreams, visualize yourself in possession of them, make affirmations in the first person present tense, and then immediately after you affirm and visualize, take an action step towards that dream in faith. This little process can help you create a new self-concept. And once you've created that new self-concept, you'll act in a manner that is consistent with it. Your dream is actually your fuel. The visualization and affirmation act like the fuel injectors and your actions are you turning on the ignition switch. All three of these work together. Okay, now that you have your dream identified, here's your next step. Set some goals. Now when it comes to goals, here are a couple things to remember. Network marketing is a numbers game with an attitude and success loves speed. Here's a couple myths that'll kill you. Build it slow and steady and just don't quit. Here's the truth, it will grow fast and exciting or it will die slow and painful. Since people move towards pleasure or away from pain, many people who build it slow will eventually quit to stop the pain of slow growth. So don't buy into the concept of slow and steady growth, it'll kill you. Now how does that play into setting goals? Since network marketing is a numbers game and success loves speed, let's look at the numbers. Out of 20 people who say, yes, I want this to work for me, four of them get engaged as soon as they join. We call them nows. Four of them are ready, but they have a few things to take care of first before they get engaged. We call them laters. Eight of them like this, but they want to watch for a while before they engage. We call them watchers. And four of them say they like this, but you never see them again. We call them quitters. So out of 20 yeses, you'll have four nows, four laters, eight watchers, and four quitters. Now these numbers not only work in width, they work in depth too. In fact, you'll find building depth is easier and faster than building width because every time a new person joins you in depth, you'll have access to their list and their efforts. So it's not just you driving at 20 deep, everyone is. Since ICB is a binary, teach everyone to have 20-20 vision. And here's where the speed comes in. The faster you drive at 20 deep, the more of your IBOs will upgrade and become engaged. We find that if you'll get at 20 deep within 30 days, you'll have 16 of your IBOs actually engaged. And when you contrast to the IBO that takes 20 months to get at 20 deep, let's just say they might have four IBOs engaged. So here's your goal, get 20, 20, and 30. Now, if you're thinking that's too big to believe, remember a goal is nothing more than a target you shoot for. It gives you something to aim at. 
If the goal of getting your two binary legs 20 deep within 30 days causes you to be stymied, here's what I recommend you do. Go back to your dream and then affirm, visualize, and act in faith. That's the process that will build your willingness to do. You have to have faith before you have belief. Don't buy into the propaganda that you have to believe it first. You have to have faith before belief. And in fact, it's the action and faith that will cause your belief. Okay, now that we have your dreams identified and your goal set, it's time to make some commitments. Now, before I outline what I recommend you do for a commitment, let me say this. We have found that the six-figure income earners have done what I'm about to share with you. They have put forth a one-time massive effort for a concentrated period of time to lay the foundation that will produce a six-figure income. So as I lay out the commitment, remember we're talking about a six-figure income for this one-time effort. And on a side note, the only difference between the six-figure income earners and the seven-figure income earners is the seven-figure income earners have done this a few times where the six-figure income earners have done this just once. Now as I lay out this 30-day game plan, if you look at the commitment as being too much, here's what I recommend you do. Go back to your dream and visualize, affirm, and act in faith. Always go back to the dream. Remember, the path to willingness comes from the dream. Now, here's the way I looked at this. Even though some people were able to create a six-figure income without 20, 20, and 30 days, the overwhelming majority of the six-figure income earners did it. So in my mind, the price for success does not go down. To be a six-figure income earner, I needed to do the 20, 20, and 30. And since the price was not negotiable, I had to increase the prize. You might have to do the same thing. Get the prize big enough that you'd be willing to do anything for 30 days. Remember, we're only talking about a commitment to a 30-day game plan. Now, you want to do some preparation prior to the 2020 and 30 campaign. Be committed to the end. Clear your calendar. Be willing to sacrifice for 30 days. Negotiate with your family. If you have non-supporting people in your life, it's because they're tired of watching you crawl. Make the decision to go big, and then they'll support you because if they really care about you, they'll want you to succeed. Eliminate all distractions. If you've been involved in ICB for a while and you're just now upgrading to get engaged, don't let any of your existing groups sidetrack you. Stay 100% focused on 20, 20, and 30. Make a fresh list of prospects. Sharpen your skills, specifically your inviting skills. Set up your game plan. Now everyone's numbers will run a little different. But if you attack this in a 30-day period with conviction and purpose, you'll become contagious and infectious. If you can remember that this is a transference of a feeling, not an intellectual exchange, your numbers will be infinitely better. Now here's what I expect my numbers to be. I would expect that I'd be able to sponsor two people out of every three people I get on a three-way call. I would expect that I'd be able to get three people on a three-way call for every nine people I get to go to the website. I would expect that I would get nine people to go to the website for every 12 people that I call. And I would expect to be able to call 12 people for every 50 on my list. My game plan is to start off by getting two new people within three days. And based on my numbers, I know I need to have at least 50 active names on my list that I can call today. And because I want to stack the deck in my favor, I'm going to see to it to have twice as many active names on my list as my numbers suggest. And that's exactly what I'm committed to do. I'm willing to call 100 people with an understanding that I'm going to get a hold of 24 and that will lead to my two. I'm going to put one in my left team and one in my right team. And as soon as I get them involved in the getting started process, I'm going to go get two more. Now here's what I mean when I say get them involved in the getting started process. I'm going to have them watch this presentation to see if they're a now, a later, a watcher, or a quitter. You don't have to explain this information to your new IBO. The presentation explains it for you. And here's what you'll find out. The speed of the leader determines the speed of the group. If you're out there getting two more new ones as they're going through the getting started process, the number of your IBOs that get engaged will increase dramatically. Now, as soon as your new IBO has gotten through this presentation, tell them you'll take your time, your money, your resources, and your expertise to assist them in creating an income that can meet any dream they have if they're ready to run. And if they give you a positive sign, run with them. Help them get started by helping them put their list of names together and helping them contact their list so they can get their two. Remember this model. You get two, they get two. That's how this works. And as soon as you get your two new ones, go get two more. And keep repeating this cycle as often as you have to to get your 20, 20, and 30 days accomplished. I think you'd be surprised at how fast this depth will start to pop as you and your team all buy into the 20, 20, and 30 goal. Look how deep you are by day nine with this strategy if they all buy in. In fact, if they all buy in, you'll be 31 deep by day 15. Now, if that happens, that's great, but don't stop. Keep working another 15 days, teaching every new IBO the 20, 20, and 30 strategy.
You only have to do this once to lay the foundation for a six-figure income. It's a 30-day commitment that can pay you for life. This 20, 20, and 30 campaign can explode your business, and you only have to do it once. Now you want to pick your 30-day window. Pick the date, and then that decision will cause you to act. Put the stake in the ground and go do it. Create a deadline and tell the world you're going to go do it. Now you also need to prepare your story. The story is what you tell your prospects. Tell it from the inside out, not the outside in. Tell them why, and then the what and the how are not that big of a deal. Here's my story. I got connected with a group of people who are very concerned about the direction of our country. Now they're not into politics. In fact, they think politics are a big part of our problem. They're into helping people. With 92 million people not working in the U.S., 47 million people on food stamps, with the student loan debt that is skyrocketing, and with two-thirds of the boomers being undercapitalized for retirement, and the fact that household income has declined by 8.2% since 2008, they feel that we need to create an economic revival at the grassroots. They want to put the power back in the hands of the marketplace by helping people increase their income by at least $50,000 per year. They have a strategy to help 1 million people do this within the next five years, and they're looking for people to partner up with them to make this happen. These guys have their hearts in the right place. They want to help people and I feel they can change the direction of the country. Plus anyone who partners with them will be able to make some good money along the way too. That's my story. My story is telling people why I'm doing this. I want to save this country. I don't need to mention what we're doing, building an end user link system. I don't need to mention how we're doing it. You get to, they get to. The story should connect with the prospect by transferring the feeling of why we're doing this. And it's from that feeling that your prospects will want to know more and then partner with you. Remember, this is a transference of a feeling, not an intellectual exchange. Okay, we have the dream identified and the goal set and we've made the commitments. Now it's time to do the action steps. Here are the action steps. Step one, create an active list of names. Step two, contact and invite the list. Step three, start the process. Step four, follow through. Let's talk a little bit about the list. When people look at network marketing, one of the biggest questions is, do I know anybody? They believe if they know a lot of people, they can have lots of success, and if they don't know a lot of people, they don't have a chance. It sounds logical, but it's just not true. In network marketing, there are three kinds of people the posers, the amateurs, and the professionals. When it comes to finding prospects, the posers make a mental list of three, four, or maybe five people that will probably join their business. Then their whole future is based upon the response of those few people. If they're lucky enough to get one of them, then they can extend the life of their career for a short time. They might even make another mental list of three or four people. Hopefully they'll decide to stop being a poser and upgrade to at least the amateur ranks before they quit. Would it surprise you to know that approximately 80% of all the people who join network marketing approach it as posers? It's true. 8 out of 10 people who become IBOs in our profession first approach building their business with a poser mentality. They make a small mental list and see what happens. They never set out to develop the necessary skills. Our job inside our business is to drive that percentage from 80% to a much lower number. Educate people. Help them understand how powerful this opportunity can be if they treat it with respect. Now I think you can understand why people come and go in the network marketing profession. The posers along with the lottery mentality is the reason. It isn't network marketing, it's the mindset of the people who join. So the posers only real chance of success is luck. The second group are amateurs. Instead of a small mental list, these people make a written list, which is a step in the right direction. They'll probably start off with a list of 100 prospects, and then they charge out there with excitement, but not a lot of skills, and begin prospecting. And as their list begins to get smaller and smaller, their anxiety about running out of people to talk to grows higher and higher. As people progress from the poser to the amateur ranks, they still are at risk of failure. Here's how it goes for most amateurs. We start talking to everyone, and it doesn't take long for the amateur to go through the 100 name. And all of a sudden, everyone in your world knows what you're doing. And they've either said yes, or they've said no. It's a scary period in your network marketing life. You feel that if you don't find some great people from your list and find them soon, you're gonna fail in this business. When I first began building my network marketing business, it never occurred to me that finding quality people to prospect was a skill. I always viewed the list as the ticket to wealth. If you had a good list, you'd succeed, and if you had a bad one, you'd either get lucky or you'd fail. When you begin to study the people who have built large and successful organizations, you'll find that they approach finding people to talk to as one of their core skills. It was part of their job to find new people. They weren't interested in luck, and they were never worried about running out of people. They made sure that never happened. The professionals started with a written list, but then they decided to never stop adding to the list. 
they created what they called the active candidate list. And I'm going to show you how to do that same thing. When Harvey McKay, the author of the best-selling book, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive, was asked how he was able to build such a large and influential list of friends, he told the interviewer that at the age of 18, his father sat down with him and said, Harvey, starting today and for the rest of your life, I want you to take every person you meet, get their contact information, and find a creative way to stay in touch with them. He's done that for over 60 years, and today his list of friends is more than 12,000 people. And these aren't just social media friends, they're real. This is what network marketing professionals do. Now, how do they do that? Step one, make a list and then make it as comprehensive as possible. Put every person you can think of on the list. That means every person. It doesn't matter if you think they're a prospect or not. Add them to the list. Your database is one of your most important assets. Everyone goes on the list. If they're negative, put them on the list. If you hate them, put them on the list. If they're your best friend, put them on the list. If they said, I'll never be involved in network marketing ever, put them on the list. If they're 98 years old, put them on the list. If they're 18 years old, put them on the list. It's important to do this because as you empty your mind out on paper, it'll make room for new contacts to come. When you write down your nephew, you begin to think about the circle around your nephew. All of these connections will become apparent as you make your list more and more comprehensive. Think about everything, every organization you've ever been involved in, every group you've ever been part of, everything you've ever done. If you do this right, your list will end up being hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of people. Step two, expand your existing list by looking at your list and thinking about people they know. Chances are you'll know most of them also. Think about the members of your family. Who do they know? Add them to your list. Think about your friends. Who do they know? Add them to your list. Think about all relationships in your life. Who do they know? Add them to your list. Don't worry about what you're going to do with this list yet. We'll talk about that later. Just keep building it. Step three, constantly expand your list. This is why the professionals call it an active candidate list. It never stops growing. The pros have a goal to add at least two people to their list every single day. They may not prospect them. In fact, they probably won't prospect most of them. But as Harvey McKay's father said, they go on the list and you should find a creative way to stay in touch with them. If you think about this as a core skill, you'll realize it isn't very hard. You come in contact with people every day. Just add them to your list. You meet people through online social media. Add them to your list. You do business with new people. Add them to your list. You need to develop a higher level of awareness. You're going to have to pay attention to the world. You're going to be introduced to new people all the time. But the posers and amateurs don't even notice them. They just go through their day saying, what people? I don't see any people. How hard would it be to raise your awareness and add two new people a day to your list? Think about that. If you did that seven days a week, that's 728 new people a year. Do that for five years, that's 3,640 new people. Can you see why professionals don't worry about running out of people to talk to? Please understand, I'm not saying that you should assault these people with your pitch the moment you're introduced. In fact, I'm saying just the opposite. Separate the contact from the invite. Some people in network marketing make the mistake and do this, but it's not good. All you want to do is just add them to your list make friends, develop a connection, and when the time is right, you can help them understand what you have to offer. Step four, network on purpose. Professionals network on purpose. It's hard to meet people if you're hiding from the world. Get out there, have some fun, join a new gym, have fun with a new hobby, volunteer for a new cause that's important to you. Find places and organizations where you can meet new people. Not only will you enjoy yourself, you'll also meet incredible new people. Remember, you hold the keys to transform hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. Now, I know I've spent a lot of time on the list, but I hope you can see that this is a defining step to your success. So here's my question. Are you going to be a poser, an amateur, or a professional? Now, even though we're only talking about a 30-day commitment here to kickstart your business to $100,000 per year, it's unrealistic for you to think that you can create a six-figure income as a poser or an amateur. Okay, now that we have the list covered, let's go to the next action step the contact and invite. Now if you're working from a warm market list, you'll use a little different script than if you're working from a cold market list, but in either case, the outline is the same. Step one, be in a hurry. This is a psychological issue. People are always more attracted to a person who's busy and has things going on. If you start every call or face-to-face -face conversation with the feeling that you're in a hurry, you'll find your invitations will be shorter, there'll be less questions, and the people will respect you and your time much more. Step two, compliment the prospect. This is critical. The sincere compliment, and it must be sincere, 
opens the door to real communication and it will make the prospect much more agreeable to hearing what you have to say. Step three, make the invitation. There are three different types of invites, the direct, the indirect, and the super indirect approach. You'll want to get with your business development team for guidance on which one you'll want to use, but it doesn't make any difference as far as what the objective is. They're all the same. We want to transfer the feeling of our convictions to the prospect through our story and then send the qualified prospect to the website for written confirmation of our personal convictions. And remember, before you do step three, you've already done step one and step two. The biggest mistake that is made by IBOs in step three is they try to get the prospect interested in what we're doing and how we're doing it instead of transferring the feeling of why we're doing it. Remember, once you've transferred the feeling of the why, the what and the how are not that big of a deal. After you have transferred the feeling, the next step is to send your prospect to the website for written confirmation. Let me show you how that works incorporating steps one, two, and three. Hey Wayne, Jeff here, how's everything going with you today? Hey, I don't have a lot of time to talk, but it was really important that I reach you. You're one of the most personable people I know, and I've always admired that about you. The reason for my call is I got connected with a group of people who are very concerned about the direction of the country. Now, they're not into politics. In fact, they think politics are the big part of our problem. They're into helping people. With 92 million people in the U.S. not working, 47 million people on food stamps, with student loan debt that is skyrocketing, and with two-thirds of the boomers being undercapitalized for retirement, and the fact that household income has declined by 8.2% since 2008, they feel they need to create an economic revival at the grassroots. They want to put the power back in the hands of the marketplace by helping people increase their income by at least $50,000 per year. They have a strategy to help 1 million people do this within the next five years. And they're looking for people to partner up with them to make this happen. As they were going through the type of people they're looking for, I thought of you. These guys have their hearts in the right place. They want to help people, and I feel they can change the direction of the country. Plus, anyone who partners with them will be able to make some good money along the way, too. They're looking for a couple people in our area to partner with them to make this a reality. And I know they'd like to bring them in within the next week. Can you think of anyone who might be concerned enough about the direction of our country that they might be open to meet with them to discuss the details of what they're doing? Now, if the prospect gives you some names, write them down and then ask the prospect if they'd be willing to do an introduction for you. If the prospect starts to ask questions about this, go to step four. And step four is, if I will do this, would you do that? You're not going to send them to your website unless they agree to do something in return. This is our secret weapon. This tactic works. Here's an example. If I give you a link to an online presentation that explains everything they're doing, would you click on it and watch it? Now, if you've done the first three steps properly, the answer will be yes. If they ask for more information first, just respond with, I understand that you want more information, but all of what you're looking for is on the link. The fastest way for you to really understand what they're doing will be to review the site. So if I give you the link, would you review it? If they say no, they won't review it, then thank them for their time and move on. Also review steps one through three to see what you could have done better, but do not give them the link. Step five, get a commitment. After you give them the link, ask, when do you think you could watch the presentation for sure? Don't suggest a time for them. Ask the question and have them give you the time. If it's not definitive, I'll try to do it sometime, then tell them, I don't want to waste your time or my time. These guys want to make a decision within the next week or so. Why don't we just try to lock in a time where you have seen the presentation for sure? The key is get them to say yes a second time. Staying yes to step four is not a commitment. Step six, confirm. If they tell you they'll get through the link by Tuesday night, your response should be, so if I called you Wednesday morning, you'll have seen it for sure, right? The key to step six is they have now said three times that they'll follow through and they've done it all by themselves. They've set a real appointment with you for the future. Step seven, get a time and number. What's the best number and time for me to call you? Now they've said yes four times and the chances that they'll follow through has been increased from less than 10% to now over 80%. And step eight, get off the phone. Remember, you're in a hurry. The best thing to say is something like this, great, We'll talk then, gotta run. And that takes us to the next action step, the follow through. The follow through will make or break your fast growth. There's a proven pattern that organizations use to create belief. It's personal conviction, followed by written confirmation, followed by third party validation, and then mass confirmation. Your story is the personal conviction. The website is a written confirmation and the three-way call is the third-party validation. The reason the three-way call is so important is that's where the prospect starts to feel that this is real. 
they can do it and there will be people helping them do it. During the three-way call, your business development team member will invite them to join us on our conference calls where the prospect will experience the mass confirmation that this is real, that they can do it, and people will help them do it. I hope you're starting to see the key to fast growth. The prospect has to feel that this is real. They can do it and someone will help them do it. What I just laid out for you is a pattern that will do just that. You contact your list with an attitude of sorting, not convincing. You're sorting through your list, looking for the right people to send to your website to watch a short presentation. And then you get them on the phone with one of your business support team members for a third party validation. And then they'll get them on the conference call for mass confirmation. That's our pattern. Now all you have to do is you get to, they get to, and then repeat that as often as you have to to get 20, 20, and 30. Do it once and lay the foundation for a six-figure income for years to come. Do it a few times and lay the foundation for a seven-figure income. Get back with your business development team and let them know you're ready to run. This is Jeff Evers signing off.